Orthodox Christianity civil war in the church. It has to do with the Ukraine. Andrew Kirbiko of uh, Sputnik News reports, but I'm also going to read an article having to do with the Orthodox Christian site so you can get a background on that. But this is very serious stuff because it means it's a schism in the Orthodox Church that's not at all good. Uh, many view the, the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew as taking on the role of the Pope of Rome, saying that he has the ultimate say and nobody else does, and that's not the way it is in the Orthodox Church. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church's efforts to obtain autocephaly, or what can, can for all practical intents and purposes be regarded as independence from the Moscow Patriarch Church, threatens to spark a spiritual civil war that could result in yet another schism within Christianity. Kiev recently received permission from the Holy Synod of Constantinople Patriarch Bartholomew to go forward with its plans to break from Moscow and found its own church, which it claims will free the country from Russian influence. Moscow, for its part, fiercely objects to this hostile move and expresses serious concern over the fate of its church's property and the safety of its believers in an increasingly ultra-nationalist Ukraine. It also vowed to protect them through all legal means at its disposal. The issue is extremely sensitive because Kiev is regarded as the historic cradle of the Russian civilization. That's where the Russian uh, Christian Orthodoxy started from. So uh, it's one of the reasons why the aftermath of the American-backed spree of urban terrorism, popularly referred to as Euromaidan, was so painful for many Russians. Now, however, they're forced to confront the nightmarish scenario of potentially having the spiritual bonds with their ancient motherland severed for what appears to be nothing more than self-serving political reasons that are irresponsibly, though possibly even deliberately, widening the divide between those two brotherly people. This cannot help but have geological, geopolitical consequences, which is why the theory of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church's campaign for autocephaly, independence that is, being a weaponization of religion for strategic ends is becoming more widespread. In other words, the political aspect is getting into the uh, church, the religious aspect, which is not supposed to be done. According to the view, to this view, the U.S. is encouraging the post-coup Ukrainian authorities to do all they can to provoke hatred between their people and the Russians, which could in turn impede any realistic chances of a rapprochement between them, with Ukraine successfully removed from Russia's so-called sphere of influence. The theory goes the U.S. could then expand its divide and rule identity warfare strategy into the borders of the Russian Federation itself, and it seeks to weaken the country from within through unconventional means. There's also a related train of thought that sees the U.S. hidden hand in all of this as being motivated by a liberal globalist agenda to undermine Christianity, especially Orthodox Christianity in general, and the Russian Orthodox Church's role as a defender of traditional values in particular. Now, as is what is reported from the Orthodox Christian site, Patriarch Bartholomew tells Ukrainian Prime Minister that Constantinople will help build single church in the Ukraine. Of course, this is not to be done. This has to be done through uh, Orthodox ecumenical synods. The ecumenical patriarch does not have the e ecclesiastical legal right to do this on his own. It has to be done through a synod of bishops that vote on this because the Orthodox Church does not have uh, one head of the church in, as the uh, Vatican Church has the Pope that decides what to, what to do and what not to do. It's a group vote that uh, takes place in the Orthodox Church. So what Bartholomew has done is not right. He is not proper. So he says, we pray that the Ukrainian people would be united to one church, the Mother Church of Constantinople, will help you find, help you find such a united church. A holiness ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew told Ukrainian Prime Minister Groisman during a meeting in the offices, this is back in March of 2017, last year, 
The Prime Minister was accompanied by Metropolitan Emmanuel of France, Metropolitan Bartholomew of Smyrna, Archbishop Daniel of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the USA, Ukrainian politicians and non-canonical schismatic Orthodox clergy. Schismatics are really basically uh, the riffraff, <laughs> I would say, the, the Orthodox clergy that have been found to be lacking in many things, especially ethical, um, ethical uh, values. So uh, they should basically, what could I say? They shouldn't even be clergy. But anyway, uh, these schismatic Orthodox clergy appealed to the ecumenical patriarch to involve himself in the canonical territory of the Moscow patriarch, declare Ukrainian church independent, which he has thus far at that time declared declined to do. He says, we attribute great importance to our cooperation. Ukrainians aspire to a single church and your role is very important is what they took the prime minister said, we have deep respect for your holiness and for your support in efforts leading to a unified Ukrainian orthodoxy. His All Holiness responded with thanks for the Ukrainian fidelity to the church, expressing his willingness to help the Ukrainians achieve a united church. He says, we can be optimistic about the future. He says, I want to express our gratitude for the wisdom, blessing, and love to Ukraine for caring about Ukraine and for the prayers and so on. This is what the prime minister said. And in turn, Bartholomew, the patriarch, addressed himself to the Ukrainian people, whom he styled his spiritual children. He says, we greet the entire beloved Ukrainian nation from the headquarters of the Ecumenical Patriarchy, which is, of course, in Istanbul, Constantinople, not as foreigners, but as beloved spiritual children of the Mother Church. Spiritual relations that unite the Mother Church with Ukrainians never disappear. Well, it seems that now they will be disappearing because what he's done is bringing a very bad schism between the Orthodoxy. And uh, we'll see now what's going to happen. The Orthodox bishops throughout the world and the other patriarchs of orthodoxy should come together and tell, in my opinion, uh, remind the ecumenical patriarch that he is not the head of the church. It's the synod together that votes, talks, and decides by voting. It's not a papal system like the um, infallibility of the pope. That's not the system that takes place in the orthodox church. So this is an ongoing thing, and we'll keep up to date with what happens with this, because in my opinion, Bartholomew is definitely in the wrong.